vain it is to sit down to write when you have not stood up to live. These are the words by the great American philosopher, playwright, naturalist, Henry David Thoreau. Uh, I'll tell you why I used uh, this quote. I wanted to begin my talk with this quote. But I'll tell you why I used it in the beginning, but only in the end. And that's what we writers do, right? We just create this hook in the beginning for our readers to hold on to so that we can take them onto an enthralling journey. Well, that's what I intend to do with my talk tonight on Inside a Writer's Mind. The most important um, part of a story, or for that matter, anything in life, is the beginning. And uh, the beginning of uh, myself as a storyteller, I would first like to give you a glimpse to that because it's kind of a spooky story. You know, a story which on the face of it looks unbelievable. But it has happened with me. So, uh, I was 20 years old. Uh, I had a plan A to become a sportsman in life, which I could not. I had a plan B to become a neurosurgeon, which I could not. And there was no plan C in my life. So I didn't know what I would do. When I was 20 years old, I was just doing my graduation for the heck of it. I didn't know what was awaiting me next. Meanwhile, parallelly, my grandfather, so my mother's father, unfortunately, he died. And we went to that place and, uh, you know, in my religion, one has to keep, the, keep touching the dead body till the dead body goes to the pyre and gets burned. So I was the one who was touching my grandfather's body, dead body. And I was, you know, uh, watching him burn on the pyre. I don't know what happened till this day. I don't know what happened to me at that point in time. I, I heard his skull burst. And for a few seconds, I was just zapped, frozen, standstill still in time. I came back from that place, I carried on with my life. Six months later, I started writing. You would ask what's so uh, spooky about it. So my grandfather was a closet playwright. He used to write dramas, plays, songs, which we only discovered after he died. So we opened his trunk and all those songs and, and play, plays were there. So still today, when I've written 18 books and all, I still believe my grandfather is expressing himself through me. So every, every time I sit down to write, I do, you know, uh, zone out. Uh, it's an unbelievable story, but that's what stories are, right? It makes us believe in the magical effect of storytelling. This is one question which comes to every writer in his lifetime. The most common question, I would say, is where do you get your ideas from? No, there's no secret chamber that we enter and we don't tell people about and then, you know, uh, plug out a, a, an idea from there. Idea can happen and can arrive and happen to you at any place. The moment of inspiration could be many. From your own observation portion, your own awareness of your surrounding, your own, you know, the way you live your life, it can happen to you in any and n number of possible ways. But I feel that's not the important question. The important question is, what do you do with that idea when it happens to you? Do you just be happy that an idea has happened to me? No. Obviously, you cannot present an idea in front of the readers or the audience. You need to stretch it into an engaging, twisty, curvy story. Or, or at least that's what writers do when an idea comes to them. And I've always believed the birth of an idea is very similar to the birth of a child. You know. It's a responsibility for the person to, on which the idea has happened. Just like kids, every kid is special, every idea is special. But it depends on the parent whether he or she is able to handheld that idea and take it to its max potential. So it's a responsible job as well. And sometimes we don't wrestle enough with the idea so we don't end up, you know, taking it to its max potential and we kind of, you know, let it go at the, at, at the middle point. But for that also, one needs to know the basic of storytelling. You know. Ideas may happen, everybody may have an idea, but not everyone can stretch an idea into a whole fledged, full-fledged story. Because for that, a craft is involved.
today, there are a few basic things which I'll share with you. And mind you, I mean, it's it's such a vast ocean that uh, a 14 minute odd talk won't do just, justice to it. Whatever I'm gonna say will be just three drops into this vast ocean of uh, storytelling. So the three drops that I'm gonna share with you, I'll come to that, but first, I want to, you know, talk a little bit about two basic elements of a story. So a story in itself is not an entity. A story comes into being when a plot and a character comes together. And these are the two very basic uh, fabric of uh, story and storytelling. Yeah, I always believe that, you know, uh, if you have a great out-of-the-box plot, you may have a great story. But your story will become memorable for readers only if you create a great character. I'll come to how you create great characters, but as I said, it's a, it's a vast ocean out there. So I'll just take you through the three drops that I've, uh, you know, kind of zeroed on uh, because I feel very less is talked about them. So the first drop that adds to that storytelling is uh, character action. The character action, just imagine if I come to the stage and I do nothing, I don't talk, I just stand still, what will you say? Obviously you'll get bored and obviously the agenda will not be served. Char as they say, the proverbial saying is, a character is what a character does. So character action becomes one of the most key elements in how your story progresses. We all grew up under a uh, context of a social design, we all have our own mental makeup, uh, our own cognizance teaches us uh, how, how we look at things, you know. So every time the protagonist of a story makes a choice, the readers are actually judging the protagonist. And judging how? Whether they will like it or they will not like it. That's why, uh, you know, there is a very, very conditioned uh, list of things which a hero can do in a story and a villain does in a story. And that's always because of these conditioned tick marks. And it's very important for us and for someone who's creating a protagonist in his own or her own story to make sure that the character action is apt. Where do you, how do you want the character to react? You know, where are you taking the character? What exactly the choices of a character are? If he, he or she can make the right choices and when there's nothing right and wrong in storytelling, but choices which are interesting, which are which will make the readers, uh, you know, take note of that protagonist. Hence, character action becomes a very key ingredient. Always put the character in some kind of fix because that's when the choices will come in. The second drop, apart from character action, is narrative tension. Now, narrative tension uh, is a uh, is two words where tension is self-explanatory. Narrative is basically the how your story flows. How to create narrative tension? A little bit of it is related to character action, but narrative tension is also about where the plot comes into the picture. You know, I talked to about character and plot. So we need to create and develop certain dramatic points within the storyline, which when happens, when the protagonist comes across, will be uh, so high in drama that the readers will you know, feel like, oh my god, what's going to happen next? So you know the narrative tension is developing when the reader is engrossed, engrossed and somewhere kind of uh, waiting things to happen uh, in the protagonist's life as well as in the story as a whole. Narrative tension also, when peaks is at its peak, we also call is the climax of the entire story. So one of the main things that needs to be taken care of is to keep building narrative tension. For example, the classic Indian narrative tension that happens is there are two brothers, one becomes a police officer, another becomes a crime lord, and you know as an audience that somewhere their world is going to clash. Now that's narrative tension being brewing inside you as an audience by the creators. And when that happens, when that clash happens, is the zenith of the tension which we call the climax, as I you know, previously said. The third drop, the third drop is something that very few people talk about. It's the art of asking yourself questions. I think as a creative person, as an artist, it's very important to continuously ask yourself questions. 
what does your protagonist want where does he want to go where does he what does he want to face what's what's his wound what, what does he require what's his need the questions the more the questions the more the answers the more the answers the more you as a creator will understand your protagonist and you'll be able to kind of sketch a protagonist in front of your readers which will be wholesome which will be relatable and which will have a high eq as well easier said than done though you know uh, i mean whatever i say it might sound like oh it's so easy to create something but when you sit down to create you'll realize that especially book after book after book you'll realize uh, it's not easy to hook someone's attention right it's all the more reason why you need to choose the perfect milieu as well milieu as in the background because every backdrop will have a certain amount of its own questions thrusted onto the protagonist for example a person who drives an auto will have a different set of questions compared to a person who works in an IT software company that protagonist will have a different set of questions and so on and so forth and all these drops the three drops that i talked about today from the character action to narrative tension to these questions which will lead you to an interesting zone in your own story actually will help you to create an engaging uh, uh engaging full length story with a proper beginning middle and end another aspect that uh, i wanted to touch today with my talk is which is very rarely you know uh, touched is the fact that uh, apart from creators apart from storytellers we are also artists right like musicians painters we are all artists and an artist is a ever evolving bundle of you know thoughts what happens is that if uh, the artist inside you has grown too much and the human inside you has not then it will show in your own art it's kind of a relay race which i figured out uh, that goes on inside every artist i feel you know where whatever you are uh, taking in from the society you're living in from the surroundings from your family from your friends from anywhere you know you we are always continuously subconsciously consuming information and that somewhere plays a role in our art itself and it's so much uh, integrate that uh, you will not be able to segregate it consciously so i feel it's it's very important for every artist you know to help evolve the human inside by not being rigid by being exposing by exposing oneself to challenges to take oneself out of comfort zones all the time because somewhere when you go out of your comfort zone your art also will go out of that comfort zone and stretch into something which goes beyond from where you had begun so that becomes a very important uh, uh, tool i guess and uh, another uh, last point that i wanted to touch which is a, a proverbial very dark thing in a in a writer's life is the writer's block as they talk about now writer's block i feel i don't call it a writer's block actually i call it a perspective prison a perspective prison because simply because uh, you know sometimes what happens you go through life you are creating your own stories but you are you, you are so cocooned into your own zone that you don't consider that there could be other perspectives which are waiting beyond your own radar your social radar your emotional radar uh, your spiritual radar so it's all the more important i feel and this is one of the ways also to break a writer's block per se is to go out there meet people you know we sometimes underestimate the human touch uh maybe it's the overgrowing tech uh thing but what a human being gives you no other machine will ever be able to and that's perspective on real issues so that's one way of solving it and now now coming to the end of my talk as i promised that i'll tell you why i used that henry david thoreau quote in the beginning I used it because, uh, apart from being artists, creative people, it's so important that you have to live your life. You know, uh, I think it's a human tendency to uh, secure yourself into this one uh, uh, zone, and you don't come out of it. But I feel your art so much relies on how you are sharpening your own life skill and how much you are living. So I would just suggest. let we should be all artists should live well and live in such an adventurous emotional state that our art also keeps shining and to end it all i would say what's inside a writer's mind is often deeply rooted 
in what he is telling in his stories. Thank you so much.